Good morning. Uh, this is a joint paper that uh, I've done with my colleague, John Weiss at the University of Bradford, looking at the special role of manufacturing. The paper is um, very much an empirical one, so we don't go into too much of a theoretical discussion. Uh, and I'm trying to look at the role that manufacturing or other sectors within the economy could have, so sectors or subsectors on uh, <coughs> overall growth that will come at them. So in terms of presentation, we'll briefly look at the role of manufacturing, discuss briefly the methodology we've adapted uh, in terms of uh, establishing relationship between manufacturing and uh, gross, uh, total gross. Then data sources, which is similar to the one that my colleague just went through. Data analysis and then conclusion and limitation of the paper. And there I would very much appreciate your comments on how we can improve the paper. In terms of role of manufacturing, there has been discussion that there are a special feature of manufacturing that impacts positively the overall growth and performance of an economy. The discussion goes back a long time ago to Chenery et al. and the World Bank 60s, 70s, looking at the structure of change models. More recently, <clears throat> people discuss the role within a more dynamic uh, sort of sense that manufacturing is very dynamic, is very innovative relative to other sectors within the economy. And as a result, you'll have a spillovers. There are substantial learning by doing, learning by learning. And that fits through to the rest of the economy and to the overall growth and performance. It's also argued that, that manufacturing is an important source of technology and technical change. That's where you, within the economy, you're using uh, substantial uh, embodied technology through machineries and the rest that uh, generates further changes within the economy, within the, the t technology frontier. It's also argued that there are substantial externalities through the learning that I've just referred to, through um, forward and backward linkages to the rest of the economy, and that the manufacturing sector also experiences increasing return to scale, <coughs> and as a result, it pushes up the level of growth within the economy. In terms of implication of all this discussion is that policy implication is that then by shifting resources into manufacturing sector, the economy is going to benefit. Growth will be higher and, and as a result, the level of economic activities will be higher than countries that would keep resources in less dynamic and innovative sector like agriculture. The result shift, obviously, is also uh, an old discussion, goes back to Caldo's 60s, uh, 50s, and 60s. And more recently, I think Roderick also has looked into this. Just briefly discuss the recent view that uh, complements, to a certain extent, the discussion rather than contradicting, and that relates to the role of sectors, service subsectors. And in our analysis here, we also find that certain subsectors seems to have a more significant and a statistically significant uh, relation, uh, uh, impact on growth relative to manufacturing sector that we've just discussed.
In terms of methodology that we, uh, we adapt, uh, our interest in this paper is to test for the extent of association between sector output and growth in the economy. That's the Caldota discussion that we've just, uh, just discussed. Look into the sectoral productivity, catch-up, and convergence. And in this case, we are looking to, into the beta convergence, unlike my colleague previously that was looking into sigma convergence. And also try to look at the presence of externalities between a sector output and the rest of the economy. For each of these, we are adapting different sort of methods of analysis. To test for one, for example, this is the extent of association between sector output and growth. We look into the Caldo's law and the one more recently uh, adapted by Dascopta and Singh in which the value, growth of value added in uh, an industry is positively related to the value added growth in manufacturing sector and negatively to value added, sorry, growth of labor in non-manufacturing sector. And in the data, in the paper, they use labor growth in agriculture as a sort of substitute for non-manufacturing sector because they are looking into uh, developing countries' data sets. To test for the um, uh, second uh, issues that I raised, sectoral growth, sectoral productivity, catch-up, and convergence. We basically look into the uh, well-known um, uh, model specified for convergence. Growth of um, uh, cumulative growth within a particular sector, J, is negatively related to the initial level of activities in sector J, and they are all in terms of labor uh, activities. So, Or alternatively, look into the convergence, conditional convergence in, in the sense that uh, we control for certain other factors. Z is a vector of, uh, is a vector that catches up all the various uh, factors that may impact Con may impact convergence. And for that, for the analysis that we conduct, we basically look at the institutional setup in order to see whether it makes much of a change in our analysis. For the third sort of uh, test that we want to run in terms of presence of externalities and the relationship between sectors and the rest of the economy, we adopt an augmented solar type model. This is Mankiev et al. and the rest that have followed Islam and the rest. In which case, growth, sorry, level of output within an economy, I, at the time T, is related to a set of capital and a set of labor. We apply the usual um, neoclassical assumptions, constant return to a scale, uh, specifically, and uh, simplifying uh, the model, we get to the uh, equation one, gross of um, gross within total gross within an economy, I is related to the um, rate of investment S that is made in different types of capital minus the initial level of output per labor. And uh, the type of capital that we use in our analysis is the mm, physical and human capital. 
the n that you see here, n relates to the uh, rate of population growth. Sigma is the depreciation of capital, particular type of capital, and gamma captures rate of technical change, uh, uh, total factor productivity growth within, a, within an economy. We try to capture the impact of uh, sectoral output through total factor productivity, similar to the um, analysis that Temple and Johnson made in the 98 paper. A, a level of um, total factor productivity is related to output within sector J at time T as well as a set of uh, uh, other factors that affect um, labor, pro uh, affect total productivity. We try to, for example, look into the impact that uh, trade may have, impact that institutions may have, uh, in impact that policies stability in the economy will have. And substituting this into our, uh, the, the first model, the f equation one, we simply write and get a relationship between level of growth within an economy at time t that's related to initial level of uh, uh, total factor productivity plus two capital investment that goes on in an economy, initial level of uh, uh, labor productivity, or sorry, output, and the rest of the uh, uh, variables that I've just gone through. In terms of data, data sources, We try to, we make use of the Roderick and Macmillan's 2011 paper that is basically expanded data set that my colleague just went through, but this is the 2005 version of it, up to 2005 version of it. The data set covers value added and employment for 38 countries. I think initially it was 30 and then Roderick and Macmillan expanded it, included a number of African countries, and as well as eight sectors within the economy, agriculture, mining, manufacturing, and a set of service subsectors. The data set includes a mixture of advanced economies, African, Latin American, and Asian economies, and it covers data from 1990 to 2005. We complement the data set by, from the world development indicators to trying to include other variables that are missing from the data set. Pen word tables, which uh, updated for 2011, and for institutional factors Kaufman and Cray 2011 that have produces six, I think, indicators. In terms of data analysis, in order to, as, as in the, the literature, in order to get rid of some business cycle and associated oscillation in data, we convert data into five-year averages, so we have uh, three sets of five-year average data for our analysis. In terms of uh, data analysis, we go into a bit of a descriptive analysis, basically correlation coefficients, and then go into regressions, regressions that we apply ordinary least square for the issue of convergence, and for externalities, we make use of uh, panel data the data that we run various diagnostics and based on Hausmann's test, uh, we opt for fixed effect method of analysis. 
and also the test suggests that there are variation in time and therefore we impose time um, uh, dummies in our analysis. In terms of uh, descriptive data, as you can see from here, the This is the data, the data set that includes all countries. These are sort of initial indicators of convergence, beta convergence again in this case. And there's a mixed picture. And as far as manufacturing is concerned, doesn't seem to be a, a convergence as expected. This is... Uh, This goes against the finding of uh, Roderick and associate that find a very strong beta convergence for countries in terms of manufacturing sector. They don't discuss much about the others. However, when we exclude Africa from the data set, the situation changes and then you find a, a, a stronger beta convergence and manufacturing in particular becomes quite significant. We also have beta convergence for uh, some of the subs some of the sector subsectors uh, that will go through uh, in a in a minute. In terms of the um, externalities and the regression we run, we look at the full data set and to look at potential impact and, 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 and potential problems that we might come across. There is substantial uh, relation, positive relationship, for example, between various indicators of institution that we use, and therefore to try to catch the overall impact, we use principal components and generate this PC uh, uh, country as well, PC86, and that's the principal component of the old institutional indicator that we have used. There are also potential problems of multicolonearity, given a strong relationship between uh, the dependent variable in our model. So we try to avoid this when it comes to regression analysis. Instead, in terms of Caldwell's law, we don't, uh, we, we find some relationship, but not that very strong. We try to use Caldwell for both uh, full data as well as uh, data that excludes Africa. We also make use of ordinary least square and a fixed panel result don't seem to change much. We, we try to make use of the uh, original caldo that links uh, productivity to growth of the economy to uh, uh, level of activities in manufacturing. And then with the modified, modified one that is applied by the Skupta and uh, um, Singh in more recent periods. Given the time that I'm, I'm running out of time, so I'll push through the rest. For the test of convergence, as you can see here from the analysis here, and specifically for the uh, convergence as far as manufacturing, CG man is cumulative growth in manufacturing sector doesn't seem to be convergence expected. It is present in mining and some of the um, finance, uh, some of the service subsector, the ones that you see here. However, when we uh, look at the conditional convergence and include institutional uh, proxy for uh, into the model, we find a strong convergence for quite a number of um, sectors included. 
And when we exclude Africa from the data set, again, convergence is confirmed for number of subsectors. Both conditional and unconditional are quite significant and uh, um, as expected. In terms of analysis, when it comes to role of, low role of uh, sector growth or output on overall GDP growth of the economy, as you can see from the analysis here, uh, this one is log of uh, physical capital. R is the restricted version of the model that we've applied here. This is proxy for human capital, uh, and that is secondary school education. This is the uh, GDP per capita uh, for five years, initial level of the GDP uh, for uh, the country's concern. The sectoral growth comes here. This one is agriculture sector, mining sector, manufacturing sector, and various other subsectors that we include. There is no evidence that there is a positive sectoral impact as far as manufacturing is concerned uh, on, on growth. And these are the time dummies that we use. They are highly significant. Um, they may be catching up things that we are not catching up in our analysis. In terms of sectoral growth uh, on output using, sorry, I'm, I'm using different, different uh, indicators of uh, sectors. Here, um, this is for, this is dependent variable is GDP per capita growth. This is using sectoral growth in, in, in for different sectors that we have used. Here we use role of, um, sorry, I have difficulty with my eyes, so I can't read well. Um, one, we're using sectoral labor productivity, and one, we're using sectoral output. Okay. This is the, the conclusion that we come to is that growth enhancing role of manufacturing, if any, is not unique to the manufacturing sector. Some service subsectors also play a role. There is evidence of convergence, again, beta convergence for manufacturing and some service subsectors. The convergence is stronger when Africa is excluded from the data set. It is difficult to argue that manufacturing has a special role given our analysis. However, there are some limitations in our um, set of results. There are data limitations. The data that my colleague used is much more expanded one that we have used. And the data that Roderick and Macmillan used is also much more extensive, the one that they used more recently. There are issues in terms of modeling a strategy that we have adapted, issues that we have not been really able to handle the return to scale ones effectively. The externality issues are, need to be looked into more carefully, whether they are costly externalities or not. And the role of service subsector, why um, they are, uh, well, the data set, the data suggests that, our uh, analysis suggests that there is positive, in, more positive interaction between some subsectors, but there are issues of endogeneity and causation that we have not been able to handle in our analysis. Thank you very much.